My Day, a key to understanding the Roosevelt White House. Hello, I'm Eleanor Roosevelt, and I'm happy to be here today to tell you about one of my favorite articles that I started while I was in the White House with Mr. Roosevelt. I started writing a column in the paper called My Day on January 1st, 1936. At the end of my husband's first term as president, with little expectation, I wrote the columns every day until September of 1962. Through those years, my little article became the third most syndicated political column in the country. I used my day to write about a broad range of to topics. I used that I could tell you they were all very interesting and well written, but that simply would not be true. Sometimes they were simple, my thoughts about what I saw around me. Another day, I might write about what I enjoyed as a child, or often I wrote to win American over to the cause in which I thought were important to me. Much to be a gravitation of my husband, sometimes I wrote about the struggles of being married to the president. Sometimes I wrote about topics that made people uncomfortable, like discrimination. Other times I tried to comfort people who may have been afraid during the darkest times of the war. I wanted to offer a glimpse of my life and hopefully along the way I could do some good. I wanted people to know that my husband as well as myself work hard for them and that we were human too. One of my favorite topics to write about was women's education. Being about 1943, I began to do more work in women's education, especially in the area of vocational education. It was interesting to me how many people were suddenly awakened of the importance of women education from a variety of angles. After I wrote a My Day column on January 15, 1943, about a woman's academy in Bethlehem, Maine, I received many letters that spoke of other such institutions that taught young women how to be homemakers, money managers, care for children, and apply for a job, and how to become involved in the war effort. I believe then, and still do today, that women who are able to go to college should do so. They can become valuable to their countries in many ways. I wrote the My Day column six days a week. The only time I took rest was on Sundays and a few days following the passing of Mr. Roosevelt. My first day to write after his death was April 17, 1945. I was inspired to write what I felt my husband wanted me to do, to say to the American people. I would like to share some of my columns from that day as I have found over the years, it still gives me strength to do work that he and I were so passionate about. For a long time, all hearts have been heavy for every serviceman sacrificed in the war. There is only one way in which those of us who live can repay the dead for who have given their utmost for the cause of liberty and justice. They died in the hope that through their sacrifice, people would be built and a more just war world would emerge for humanity. While my husband was in Alabama, and for some years after coming to Washington, his chief interest, interest was in seeing that the average human being was gone, given a fairer chance for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That was what made him always interested in the problem of minority groups and of under any group which was at a disadvantage. As the war clouds gathered and the inventable involvement of the country became more evident, his objective was always to deal with the problems of the war, politi political and military, so that eventually an organization might be built to prevent future wars. Abraham Lincoln was taken from us before he had achieved unity within the nation, and his people failed him. The divided of us a nation for many years. Woodrow Wilson was also stricken, and in the instant, the people of the world failed to carry out his vision. Perhaps in his wisdom, the Almighty is trying to show us that a leader may chart the way, may point out the road to lasting peace, but that many leaders and many people must do the building. It cannot be the work for one man, nor can the responsibility be laid upon his shoulders, and so, when the time comes for the people to assume the burden more fully, he is given rest. This reminds me of a book I read four years after the war. It, it was important enough that I remembered that I wrote about it in my column. Oh yes, here it is, March 19th, 1949.
I had just finished a book which was given me when I was on the West Coast. It's called To Hell and Back by Audrey Murphy. He had a remarkable record in World War II and holds perhaps as many decorations as it is possible for one soldier to accumulate. He has received 21 medals, including one of the highest military decoration, the Congressional Medal of Honor. He wanted to write a book, he said, so that the United States would not forget what war really means to men who fought in it. The unforgettable chapter, I think, is the last one, in which he tells of his recreations. Some of the pictures are ugly, some of the scenes he may never have been able to forget, and those who read them should not forget them either. But it is the last paragraph in the book I want to especially to remember. When Mr. Murphy was young, he was told that men were branded by war. Now with the war at an end, he thinks all of those who will never come back and wonders what he'll, he, he himself will do. My country, America, that's it. We have been so intent on death, we have forgotten life. And now suddenly, life faces us. I swear to myself, I will measure up to it. I may be branded by war, but I will not be defeated by it. Gradually, it became clear, I will go back. I will find the kind of girl of whom I once dreamed. I will learn to look at life through unclickinal eyes. To have faith to know love, I will learn to work in peace as in war. And finally, finally, like countless others, I will learn to live again. Every one of us in the country should remember that that is what men who fought the war are now trying to do. One of our jobs is to help them to do it and above all to help them build a peaceful world so that other men will not have to face first a war and then return to living. I think it's important to always remember that we cannot forget to actually live in the world and to live is to serve others when we can. That's why in 1951 I took part in the celebration in St. Louis on Human Rights Day. Ever since the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was passed in Paris in 1948, we observed the day in the United States and around the world. The reason for that is that the Declaration of Human Rights are spoken of and emphasized in the Charter of the United Nations. And the Declaration was written to give more meaning to the rights already mentioned in the Charter and to emphasize for all of us the fact that the building of human rights would be one of the foundation stones on which we would build in the world an atmosphere in which peace can grow. For that reason, all over the world, we encourage the United States to observe a whole week before United, United, United Nations Day. Came around to explain the United Nations and what goes on in that organization and when we celebrate. We want people to really understand what we consider to be most important rights for all the people throughout the world. Treaties were passed and countries made agreements to want peace, but the real change will only come when all people have their human rights throughout the world, and that will happen from the heart of the people. We must always want our fellow human beings to have rights and freedoms which give them respect and allow them to keep their heads up high and look all the men in the face. I wrote about human rights in my day on many occasions, I truly believe and still believe that if we observe human rights for ourselves and for others, we will find that it is easier the world to build peace because we destroy all the human rights and freedom. So in fighting for those, we fight for peace. The performance you have just heard was created entirely out of the world words contained in Mr. Roosevelt's My Day column. While President Roosevelt became well known for his fireside chats, Miss Roosevelt communicates directly while American people through their, her daily columns. She wrote them for all over the world and in every major city in the U.S. Eleanor Roosevelt columns gave the Roosevelt administration a flexible tool in the political toolbox. There were numerous of columns during the years of World War II that were patriotic. My day was something political, something personal, and other times a public relations tool. 
Her column showed the perspective of an active woman who was not content to sit around and not be actively involved in the world around her. She established herself as a woman with journalistic qualities and defined herself outside the customary boundaries of her position. Reading Eleanor Roosevelt's My Day column are recorded of her communication with the American people that are the key to understanding who she was as a person and a woman, a wife, a mother, a, cruci a crucifer, and a first lady. Thank you.